Hello students, welcome to Drishti IAS. My name is Saloni Nandkyolia and in today's session we will study the golden blood which is being artificially replicated by scientists across the world. So what do we mean by golden blood and what is so special about this blood? So the golden blood or RH null, this actually is an extremely rare blood group. In fact, this is so rare that only 50 individuals across the world carry this blood group. So, this becomes what? The rarest blood group in the world. Only 50 individuals across the world carry this blood group. And it is being called golden because A, it's extremely what? Rare. And because this is extremely rare, it becomes invaluable in scientific research. And that is why scientists across the world, they are trying to replicate this in laboratories. Because imagine the situation of blood transfusion for these 50 people. Blood transfusion is a life-saving technology that helps us during the times of medical emergencies. But if any one of these 50 people require a blood transfusion, how will they find a donor in time? These are only handful of people scattered across the world. How will they get a donor in time? And this can be life-threatening for them. That is why these people in fact are advised to store their own blood so that they can be helped during the times of emergency. But for the good of larger mankind, scientists will also have to do something and that is why they have started replicating this. They are researching and replicating this blood group in labs so that these people can actually be benefited during the times of blood transfusion. Because an RH null person can only receive blood from another RH null person and these are very limited in number. So it becomes very difficult for the scientists to come up with some innovation and start building this in laboratories also so that the entire mankind can benefit from this. So now let's talk about the characteristics of RH null but before we do that let's quickly understand the blood grouping system. So we know that there are multiple blood grouping systems but two become extremely important for us which are the ABO blood grouping and the RH blood grouping and the blood group actually is decided on the basis of the presence or absence of antigens and antibodies. So, what are antigens? Antigens are actually the proteins that are present on the surface of RBCs or your red blood cells and these act as the identity markers. The presence or absence of antigens actually decides what your blood group is going to be. So, antigens are what? They are the identity markers and antibodies attack on any foreign substances for our immunity. So, this is what antigens and antibodies do and the presence and absence of these antigens is going to decide what our blood group is going to be. Now, if we talk about the ABO blood grouping, this was discovered in the 1900s by Carl Landsteiner. And the ABO blood grouping, it has four blood groups. Each of them have specific antigens and antibodies. A, B, A, B and O. So, A is going to have which antigen? I just told you antigens are the identity markers. So, A is going to have antigen A and anti B antibodies. This means that a person with a blood group A will not be able to receive blood from blood group B because it has anti B antibody. So, if you give him B because B will have what? Antigen B. If you give this person antigen B, the antibodies are going to recognize it as a foreign substance and they are going to attack it. So, what will happen? Agglutination agglutination of blood which means the clumping of RBCs will happen. RBCs will come, they will stick together, they will form clumps or lumps and this is going to lead to hemolysis which is the breakdown of RBCs, an abnormal breakdown of RBCs in this case. That is why this blood transfusion is not going to be successful. That's why it's extremely important to do a proper blood group matching during the times of blood transfusion because otherwise this can be life-threatening. 
So A is going to have antigen A, anti antibodies, anti B antibodies. B will have antigen B and anti A antibodies. What will AB have? AB will have both the antigens A and B and no antibodies. Now imagine this. Because they have no antibodies, they become the universal acceptor. They can accept all types of bloods because there are no antibodies to attack. No antibodies but both the antigens. And O has no antigens. And both antibodies. So what happens with O? O becomes the universal donor because it has no antigen. No other blood group type is going to recognize this as a foreign substance. It has no antigen. It can go give blood to anybody. But it has both the antibodies. So it gets very difficult for O to receive blood from A or B. It will only receive blood from another O. This happens in the ABO blood grouping. Similarly, we have RH. And RH becomes important for golden blood because golden blood was what? RH null. Now, RH blood grouping actually has some 50 proteins and the presence and absence of these proteins basically decides what the RH grouping is going to look like. So, we basically know of what? RH positive and RH negative. RH positive, RH negative is decided on the presence of D protein. So, if there is RH D present, then this will be an Rh plus because D is the protein that's present here. Rhd will have Rh plus and if there is an absence of Rhd, there will be Rh minus. But the presence or absence of D basically does not mean that no other antigens or no other protein is going to be present there. If D is not present, some other out of these 50 can be present, other 49 something else can be present. But Rh null here means that no antigens, no proteins are present. This becomes similar to what in the ABO? The O blood group. Because there are no antigens, they can give blood to all the other RH types. They become what? They become universal donors. But they cannot accept blood from any other person other than RH null because then they will start producing antibodies and this will lead to hemolysis. That is why an RH null can only receive blood from another RH null because that person will also not have any antigens. That is why RH null becomes extremely rare, extremely critical and it's important for the scientists to start developing that on a larger scale so that everybody can benefit from this thing. So, RH null becomes a universal donor and this is irrespective of the blood group type. This works well with both ABO and RH grouping because there are no antigens, no antigens which means no antibodies are going to attack it, nothing is going to be formed, no uh, agglutination is going to happen, no hemolysis is going to happen. It is perfectly safe for these people to donate blood to anybody but they cannot accept blood similarly in the same manner. So, that's the whole criticality of the situation and because these are only 50 people in number, it becomes extremely important to start developing this on a larger scale so that everybody can benefit from this thing. That was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the discussion over here. Now, let us look at a practice question for prelims. Consider the following statements about the golden blood type. 1. It lacks all Rh antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. 2. Individuals with this blood type can donate blood to any person irrespective of their Rh antigen profile. 3. Individuals with this blood type can safely receive blood from any Rh negative donor. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only B. 2 only C. 1 and 2 only or D. 1, 2 and 3 Please look at all the statements carefully and attempt this question and provide your answers in the comment section. Thank you for watching. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.